Let's take a look at Hyperflex management with Intersight. First, we're going to log in, and then we're going to be presented immediately with the dashboard view based on our user. I'm going to go ahead and change the color scheme here to dark. Uh, we'll do a portion of the demo in this mode, and then we'll switch it back to light towards the end. Dark mode is currently a tech preview feature, but we'll use it for a while here anyway. To start, select Hyperflex clusters on the left menu to get our full inventory. We're going to be using a cluster named Edge-Sydney. It's a two-node Hyperflex cluster, and it does have encryption enabled, and it's currently healthy. We're also going to be using another cluster named Luigi for certain features. The first thing we're presented with when selecting the cluster is an overview. We get the name, the build, the uptime, along with the results of the most recent health check. We can see the license tier that we've got, and we also have a snapshot of our storage and our server node count. We can drill down into the physical cluster nodes by clicking the node link. In this view, we see the details of the hardware, along with the ability to mouse over the individual drives and get some detailed information about them. Notice that the context links at the top have updated. Here they are specific to the node and we can drill down even further and get additional inventory information about the actual server hardware itself. Hyperflex manages the service profile during installation, so the UCS server profile here won't be populated. The HCL tab will list the compatibility between the hardware and the currently available firmware. This HCL list is maintained in Intersight and dynamically updated as new versions become available. We can see in this view that there is one firmware update recommendation. And finally, the Statistics tab will detail the power history of the node. Moving back to the Cluster Overview and selecting the Operate tab shows us a host view of the cluster to begin with, but allows us to do all sorts of Day 2 operations. Selecting virtual machines on the left gives us a list of all of the virtual machines on the entire cluster across all data stores. Next, we can select data stores themselves and create them. Here we'll create a data store called TestDS01. We'll give it a capacity of 10 terabytes and we'll make it encrypted. The data store is immediately available, and we can click on it to get additional details. We can go back to the data stores menu, select our newly created data store, and delete it. There are additional editing capabilities in HX Connect, which we'll see shortly when we cross launch it, that allow you to rename and expand the data store. Immediately following data stores in the navigation menu is storage containers. If you had deployed them, they would show up here. This is followed by the iSCSI configuration where you can set your initiators, targets, and your iSCSI network. Next, we can select drives and see how they're deployed in the cluster on a per bay basis. Hovering over the bay tells us the physical characteristics of the drive and what it does. 
Bay 1 has the system disk, 2 has the cache disk, and the remaining are the persistent data disks. Finally, in the operate menu, we can configure encryption. Sydney already has encryption enabled, so the only operation we can do is rekey. Intersight is the key manager for this operation. Now let's move to the Luigi cluster, which does not have encryption enabled, and see what we need to do. Under operate and encryption, we now have the ability to configure encryption on this cluster. In the configuration screen, we are prompted for a passphrase. One can be auto-generated for us, and it is complex, or we can set a passphrase ourselves. One key thing to remember is that you need to record the passphrase somewhere for future use. If the cluster is encrypted and you lose the passphrase, there is no recovery. Let's move back to Sydney and pass the Operate tab. Under Profile, we get configuration deployment information. This is sparsely populated if the cluster, like this one, was deployed outside of Intersight and then brought in. Next is capacity planning. Here we can see utilization trends, and we do have the option to plan for our cluster expansion. Under expansion planning, we'll notice that we cannot do it on Sydney because this is an edge two node cluster, which is not eligible for expansion. Let's move back to Luigi, which can be expanded. Here we see that we can use the planning calculator to get an idea of what we're gonna need for the expansion. Heading back to Sydney, let's take a look at system performance. In the Performance tab, we get historical views of system IOPS, throughput, and latency. Finally, we can take a look at system health checks. These are the results of the most recently run health check. Notice that a security check is a subset of the general check. Items marked red in the security check do not mean that the system is in jeopardy. It simply means the system is not in compliance with best practices for hardening. Let's head back to the overview and take a look at the Actions Shortcut menu. This menu gives us the option to configure backup, upgrade the cluster, expand, launch Hyperflex Connect, run the health check, and open attack case. Selecting Configure Backup takes us to the Native Replication Configuration Interface. Hyperflex Native Replication allows you to replicate selected groups of VMs to another Hyperflex cluster for protection. The next action item is cluster upgrade. Here, switching to expert mode, we see that we can upgrade the actual Hyperflex data platform bundle, the hypervisor, and the firmware. Here we see that in order to meet the other upgrades we've selected, a server firmware upgrade is required. Next is cluster expansion. As noted previously, this cluster cannot be expanded since it is two node. Let's go ahead and move back to Luigi to take a look at this one. Here we are presented with an expansion wizard that allows us to select any available compatible nodes for the expansion. Moving back to Sydney, 
The next item in the Actions menu is to cross-launch Hyperflex Connect for the cluster. Hyperflex Connect is the individualized management interface for this cluster only. Let's move back to Intersight, select Run Health Check Action Item, and change our color scheme back to light. In the health check selection screen, we have the option to fine tune which health checks and security checks are run. Once we've kicked off the health check, we can select the in progress checks and view the actual status of our run. At the top of the run, we see the health check summary and we can select show additional details. These details will indicate precisely what was flagged in the check. Notice that any security items that are flagged indicate items that are out of compliance for hardening purposes. For example, here the NGINX cluster certificate is the same one that came from the factory. So it is recommended that you change this one out. The final action menu item is to open a TAC case should you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance.